I have got a story for you today. I'm Gail Masunda. I'm with Maestro Heights, and I wanted to tell you a story from the book, uh, The Strenuous Life of Scott Joplin. This is a story about when the piano that he played when he was a child. So here's my question for you. Do you take piano lessons? Have you ever had piano lessons? What kind of an instrument did you play on, or what kind of, of an instrument maybe do you have in your home right now? There are some people who have a large grand piano. Oh, it takes a pretty big house to hold one of those. Usually you're going to find a large piano like this in a church or in a concert hall, maybe in an auditorium or something like that. More people have the piano like this one in the middle. That's a what we call a vertical or an upright piano. They take up a lot less space. They're still kind of heavy, uh, but they will fit in most homes. And that's what a lot of us play. Now, I have a piano that looks a lot like that in my home, but it doesn't have any strings inside. It's a, a digital or electronic instrument, but it takes up about the same amount of space, even though it doesn't weigh nearly as much. And then some people have portable keyboards. By their very name, they're meant to be portable. They're very small, generally lightweight. Uh, they're meant to be moved from place to place, which is really pretty convenient. Most of them have at least 61 keys, some have 76, some have the full-size piano will have 88, but they're not quite the same as a piano, but yet we have options. It's kind of like small, medium, and large. Well, at about the time when uh, Scott Joplin was taking piano lessons, that would have been in the 1870s, uh, grand piano sort of looked like this. It was still a very, very large instrument, and it would have taken a very, very large home or a church or a concert hall in order to hold something like that. They didn't really have the vertical or the upright pianos. Uh, there were a few around, but they, they weren't really all that great. They really weren't catching, around, catching on all that much. And the portable keyboards hadn't even been invented yet. So that really wasn't an option at all. On a uh, grand piano, like if I play it like this, the strings go basically away from me. They're kind of lined up that way. I play this way. If I'm playing on a vertical or an upright piano, I'm playing here and the strings go this way. And that's why they save so much space. At this time, when, when Joplin was uh, taking his lessons and learning how to play, there was one other space-saving piano, and that was called a square piano. Now you can look at that and tell that it's really not square. It's, it's really more of a rectangle, but still we call it a square piano. What's really different about this and the way that it saves space is that the keys are here, but the strings run long ways back behind the keys, and that's how it saves space. They were still quite large, and they were still very, very heavy, but they didn't take up as much room as a grand piano. But the one thing about this is that these were expensive instruments. A good square piano could cost almost as much as a small house. So that a lot of people just simply were not able to afford one. Well, when Scott Joplin was small, his family lived in Texarkana, Arkansas. And Scott was from a musical family. There were sing people played and sang, in played different instruments and sang. I'll get it out here. Uh, and really enjoyed music. And his talent as a musician, as a young musician, showed from a very early age. And it worked out that he was going to take piano lessons. And he took from lessons from different people in the town. But they didn't have a piano. So how was he going to do his practicing? be tough to practice and learn how to play without an instrument, wouldn't it? Well, Scott's mother, named Florence Joplin, was a housekeeper or a domestic or a maid for other families in the neighborhood. And at least one of those families that she worked with had a piano, a square grand. So she had an idea and she arranged for young Scott to practice on that piano while she was working. Now, as a mom, as well, or a grandmom, as well as a piano teacher, I'm telling you, I, it would have made my job a lot easier if I could hear music being played while I was doing my chores. You know, they didn't have TV, they didn't have streaming music, they didn't have even have radio recordings or any kind. So that music would have been really precious. And I can't help but think that Florence enjoyed hearing her son Scott play too. 
Well, Scott remembers playing on a square grand piano. And there was a family named Wilder who had that square grand piano. And they remember hearing those stories too. And they donated that piano to the Texarkana Museum system. And there it is on display. A couple of years ago, I had the privilege of going to Texarkana and I got to see that piano. How exciting it was to think that I was looking at the very piano that Scott Joplin played. That's really exciting. You know, it's not easy to learn how to play the piano. It's not easy to learn to play the piano when you don't even have one of your own to practice on. But Scott Joplin did it. He kept at it. He kept working. He kept trying. Eventually, he did have a piano of his own and he kept at it and he kept working. And he became a professional musician and he kept at it and he kept working and he became one of America's finest composers. He kept at it and he kept working and he eventually became the king of ragtime. If you'd like to learn more about Scott Joplin, check out the links down below. I'll be back with another short story soon. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.